Guess what? I decided to hit record this time so I can actually tell you the actual story. Hey, hey everybody, Jay here. I'm back with a video for you guys today. There are tons of metrology tools that are available out in the market. Calipers, gauge pins, micrometers, CMMs, automated height gauges. There's just tool after tool after tool. And things like optical comparators are incredibly useful for being able to you know, give you the dimension of a part that is maybe difficult to measure in other methods, and it gives you a 2D, uh, kind of a 2D silhouette. I had a part that was very small, about the size of my thumb, and there was a, a feature, like a little boss, that was down in a pocket that just couldn't be reached with really any other method that was available to me, at least not one that was cost effective. And so I had to find a way to measure this little boss that was down in this recessed area, and I really couldn't figure out a way to do it. And it finally dawned on me, man, it would really be nice. Well, let me back up. It dawned on me after inspecting the part with my little digital microscope that I got on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. It dawned on me that, man, if I could just move this part accurately underneath the microscope, I could probably like put a mark on the screen and then I would know exactly how big this feature was. Now, to be fair, I don't know how accurate this is a couple of thousands, a thousand maybe. It's hard to say. I can tell you this, it works for my application, so I'm happy. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the camera, I'm gonna bring, it, bring you guys over my shoulder and I'm gonna show you this little setup. And basically what it is, it's a little cross slide uh, combined with a dial test indicator and a digital microscope to make for kind of a, an optical measuring system that uh, allows you to access features that wouldn't normally be accessible through something like an optical comparator. So come on, let me show you what this is all about. All right, I'm gonna try and make this quick for you guys today, but I wanted to show you guys a little trick here. This is just cobbled together quickly. This is just a good old fashioned SD card. And if I bring it in close to the camera, you can see, look how small that little arrow, this little feature is, this little arrow. And so I'm gonna put it on here this is just my microscope, my dirt cheap microscope that you can get. And we're just gonna put, put it on roughly, let's see here. We're just gonna put it on this aluminum block. We'll, we'll, we'll get it, we'll bring it into focus the best we can. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good focus right there. And now what we'll do is I'm just gonna crank this little thing until we're at zero down here. And we're gonna take the backlash out of it. So. So we're at zero. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, just leave it this way, you guys can see. I put a little mark right here on the screen and I'll, I'll try to zoom in a little closer for you guys. But there's a little mark that I just used with a Sharpie that I put right on the screen right there. And so now I've got my little arrow. And so now you can see my little mark that I've got on the screen with a little marker. I've got it right up against the edge of the triangle. And down here, I've got the indicator on zero. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start cranking this thing over. And so what we'll do, let me try to move this in a little closer for you guys. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna crank this thing over and we're gonna count the revolutions. This is a five ten thousandths increment indicator with a whole bunch of travel, like a few hundred thousands. So I'm just gonna crank this over and we're gonna watch this little dial indicator. So, so we're going across. So right here, we're at 45, 50 thousandths. And right here on the right edge of my mark, we have the size of that little arrow. And just so you guys know, I didn't even zoom in very much. You could zoom way, you could zoom in a lot more if you really wanted to. This thing's all loose because I've just kind of got it cobbled together right now. Let's see if, let's see if everything, let's see if everything moved. Let's see if we can do this one more time. Yeah, so this thing is, yeah. So we're still, we're gonna keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So this is, this is zero. I've got to re I got to reset the indicator here. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna fixture this whole thing up so it's like permanently solid. But for now, this is my little my little uh, makeshift, kind of like an optical comparator. So there we are again. We're back directly on zero, and we're just gonna crank this thing one more time. See, it zoomed in even more. So that's that's forty five right there, and right to the edge. So so just just fifty ish thousands. So it's not it's not the most accurate thing in the world, but if you're trying to measure something small, like this little triangle, that's right here, and you don't have a way to measure it with say a caliper or a micrometer, an inexpensive little microscope, digital microscope, combined with one of these little like milling table operations, this is like a hundred bucks on Amazon. And it just, it's just a, basically kind of like a cross slide, you know, X and Y. It has, it does have some graduations on the, on the handles and stuff like that. So I guess you could use it for like jewelry or something small, but I got it just so I could move things accurately underneath this digital microscope. Just wanted to share a little, little trick that I got that I've been working on over the years. Just little odds, little, little, little tricks I picked up, little, little, little kind of like workarounds when you don't have a super high end optical comparator or a CMM or something like that. Okay, well, as you guys can see, this isn't rocket science and there's all kinds of things that can potentially go wrong. You can have this whole measuring setup completely out of alignment, rotating around all six degrees of freedom. You could potentially have your indicator at an angle so that you're getting some cosine error. There's lots of things that can go wrong. So if you decide to try this, just try to isolate as many of those variables as you possibly can. But for a $100 cross slide, combined with a dial test indicator I already owned and a $100 microscope I already owned. This was a relatively cheap way for me to inspect a boss that was sitting down in a little recessed pocket uh, that really couldn't be measured any other way, at least not with the tools that I had on hand. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.